Creepy parasites are found all over the animal world if you go throughout history. They infect humans with deadly illnesses through bites or simply by being around open wounds or mucous membranes. Much like the flesh-eating fungi, however, that's nothing compared to the cookie-cutter shark, which, yes, does almost exactly what it sounds like, except that they cut dolphins, not cookies. Then there's the assassin bug, which, well, also does exactly what it sounds like. They mercilessly kill humans, their own kind, and even their own family. But to get to the creepiest tongue parasite that lives inside fish mouse, you'll have to watch till the end. All right, subscribe to the Forever Green channel and let's get into it. Assassin Bugs Assassins are among the sneakiest and most vile creatures of this world. These bugs have perfected the art of hiding to ambush their prey. They are known for concealing themselves on leaves or branches and then jumping out to attack unsuspecting insects that land next to them. They also use camouflage as a way to attack large prey because their venom is only strong enough to kill small creatures. Once the poison has paralyzed the prey, the assassin bug will eat it alive. Assassins are known for attacking others and committing cannibalism, eating other members of their species even if they're a close relative. They have a completely separate set of jaws for eating their own kind. No matter how hard you try to avoid these creepy creatures, they will always find a way to creep up on you and bite you. However, if they only feed on small bugs, then they may not be such a dangerous bug after all. Unfortunately for us, according to scientists, most of their prey is considered garden pests. Even though assassin bugs can be helpful to us, they're still scary because of the harm they can cause. Though you may not believe it, these silent hunters could easily kill humans with their venomous bites, so make sure to stay away from them. Whip Scorpions Have you ever heard of a whip scorpion? If you haven't, then let me tell you. They're totally real, and they're probably a lot closer to you than you know. You can usually find them in deserts or near caves, and they'll wait for their prey to be within inches of it before snapping at them with their deadly venomous fangs. Whoa. His response to this is just phenomenal. What's worse is that they have this cool technique where they mimic the shape of a leaf. This is so their prey won't notice them, which can sometimes be up to 40% of their body length. But there is only one problem with this. They're predators themselves. They aren't picky about what they eat either. They'll eat just about anything that's alive, whether it be a plant or an animal. They have even been known to eat each other simply out of hunger. Now you may think that because they look like a harmless leaf, then there's no real reason to worry. You couldn't be more wrong. If the unfortunate victim doesn't get away in time and is within range, the whip scorpion will strike. It has a special attack where it can whip down its tail and stab the victim with venomous fangs that can paralyze or kill in one bite. One of the most dangerous predators in existence right here, folks. It should come as no surprise that they're also carnivores, but it gets worse. They don't just attack with their tails. They also use them as a form of self-defense against other predators, such as spiders and centipedes. So if you're ever in danger, whether it be from these creatures or not, make sure to stay away. Cookie Cutter Shark The only thing creepier than being eaten alive is having chunks cut out of you and not knowing who or what did it. Well, this is exactly what happens to many species of larger animals that live in the deep sea. This type of shark is called the cookie cutter and it latches itself to its victims using suction cups. Once attached, these guys use their powerful lower jaw to slice out plugs of flesh from larger prey like dolphins, tuna, and even whales. They have a set of razor sharp teeth that can rip apart prey to pieces so easily and quietly. It's horrifyingly scary. Cookie cutter sharks usually sneak up on their prey and then just bite into them, leaving out a perfect circle shaped chunk of flesh missing from the body, which is about the size of their mouth. This shark cannot eat the meat it bites off, but it doesn't matter because they usually go on to find another victim, which can be anything from dolphins, big tuna, or sea turtles. They are even known to attack submarines. 
It's believed that this form of attack might be responsible for many unexplained cases of large circular wounds found on dead marine mammals. Flesh-eating fungi. Flesh-eating fungi is a rare type of mushroom that has been found to feed on dead animals, including horses, cows, deer, rabbits, and even humans. According to National Geographic, there were three known instances where people were infected by this kind of fungus, but not because they handled them directly. It was because they walked barefoot in areas where the fungi grew like soil or leaf litter. Infections caused by these fungi were found to have a rapid course, and after just four days, large ulcers that were filled with dead tissue began to appear. Flesh-eating fungi mushrooms have been discussed throughout history as being a mystery because they have the ability to decompose any living thing, even humans. Flesh-eating fungi mushrooms can grow to be massive in size and destroy human-made structures as well as organic material. Their spores travel through water and grow quickly on anything that's dead or alive. Whether it's organic or not, flesh-eating fungi mushrooms can be identified by their deep blue color and red spots. The scariest part about flesh-eating fungi mushrooms is that they spread quickly, destroying anything in their path, including humans. Their spores travel through water and grow extremely fast on living parts of humans, which causes them to decompose quickly, leaving behind only bones. Flesh-eating fungi mushrooms kill humans fast, which is why it has been known that they can wipe out entire cities in days, if not hours. It's advised that you have the proper equipment when dealing with flesh-eating fungi mushrooms because they can spread spores into the air and cause the human respiratory system to collapse. Cordyceps. What are those twig-looking things next to that dead bug? It's most likely the question asked by an innocent child parent or ignorant people may answer, they're mushrooms. That's a lie. The truth is, cordyceps are parasitic fungi capable of jumping from host to host with deadly success. They enter their host, expand their spore network, and finally take over the poor bug completely. It's believed that the hosts get lost or become attracted by its sweet scent, so when they land on them, they are the ones to get infected. This one doesn't just eat their flesh, it replaces the contents of their bodies with its own cells. So when it's finishing growing, all that's left are empty shells. It's best to leave these guys alone because they might have something in common with parasitic fungi which infect ants. These insects will actually endure a long incubation period where they wander around looking for food until they die. After that, fruiting bodies sprouting from them release spores into the air so more creatures can be infected. They also throw husk of dead insects onto nearby leaves to attract ants for easy meals. Throw away all their resources toward infecting nearby hosts in spite of fatal consequences, and even tell when to use the most successful method of spore dispersal. One word, yikes! Blood flukes. These parasitic worms are taken care of by blood-feeding species of snails. But once inside a host body, they migrate to the liver to feed on blood. Blood-feeding snails have a special structure that allows them to host several flukes at once because of their size. Blood flukes cause cystosomiasis, a disease that's transmitted through contaminated food or water and even just by wading into a body of water that has infected snails. They are flat, red, and worm-like. They also have two suckers on their long end that latch onto the walls of human veins to feed blood into their mouths. The life cycles of these parasites is brutal but fascinating. Once inside the bloodstream, they're flushed to the liver where they can worm their way in between cells and eat fatty substances for up to 30 years. However, when the flukes get bigger and reproduce, this intruding can become fatal. Some blood flukes migrate to the lungs and get coughed up. These are now in the form of eggs, which are coughed up again when the mammal exhales. The flukes are now free swimming in the throat this is where they need to be to infect the stomach lining by being swallowed. Once they've penetrated its wall, it's game over. It's been observed that blood flukes have a tendency to attack the stomach of pregnant women. Once they get in, there's no way out. Blood flukes cut off the food supply from mother and baby, causing malnutrition and leading to death. Thus, the mother dies an agonizing death while her unborn fetus starves to death inside of her. The Guinea Worm 
The guinea worm, or Dracunculiasis, is an ancient disease that has been around for thousands of years. It's said that this infection started because someone drank water from the stagnant pools which had some tiny parasites in it. The symptoms are not easy to miss either. When you ingest infective water, symptoms will start to happen within a few days. The first symptom is a burning sensation that starts from your mouth all the way down to the area around your anus. The next word of warning should be a blister which forms on your skin, usually where you've swallowed the water contaminated with these tiny little parasites. Once this blister is formed, it will slowly start to expand as more and more of these worms pop their heads out. These worms are not like other worms though. Once they come out of the blister, they will burrow into your skin to make a hole for themselves and then continue to crawl around under your skin. When the worm has entered your body, it will travel through many different tissues until it has reached its final destination, which is usually the legs or arms. This is where you'll begin to feel really sick. Usually the worm will reach the lungs and continue until it reaches your throat, where it can finally be removed by a doctor. The problem with this disease is that these tiny little worms are burrowing into your flesh and crawling around. It's actually the fact that these little worm eggs can linger in your body for up to a year or more after you've been infected. This means that even if you remove one of these worms from your body, there could be many more just waiting to grow and take their place. Spiny-Headed Worm Spiny-headed worm invades crayfish and zombifies the host by turning it into a parasite's feeding machine. It causes the host to turn red and crawl up plants where birds will eat it. The spiny-headed worm is a creature that most people have probably never heard of, with the exception of certain tropical regions where these worms are not typically seen by humans. However, their threat to humanity should not be underestimated. Spiny-headed worms are parasites that attach themselves to human or mammalian hearts causing immense pain and discomfort for weeks. They lie in wait until they sense the telltale heartbeat of a host, at which point they attack with great force, their sharp spines penetrating the heart. They may also latch onto the lungs, causing suffocation and eventually leading to death. Victims feel an almost immediate pain when attacked by these animals. Most die within seconds or minutes, but some are strong enough to withstand the pain for up to several hours. There's currently no known anti-parasitic medicine that will remove spiny-headed worms from a host, and surgery is ineffective. Little more than a waste of time and resources, as these parasites latch on very tightly and do not let go easily. Tongue-Tied Fish You heard it right, there is such a thing as a fish that ties itself into a knot with its own tongue. It's called Samotha exuaya, and it's probably one of the creepiest things you'll ever see. This parasitic crustacean enters through gills where it attaches itself to fish tongues, which are bloody stumps by this point. It basically becomes the fish's tongue so it will swim around looking for food and eat with it too. There are cases of these parasites being found in blue crabs, snails, jellyfish, clams, sea anemones, and even other fish species whose tongues have been destroyed by their own prey. Most people actually don't even believe that such a thing exists because of its strange nature. The Samothoa exuaya attaches itself to the host's tongue with its pincers and enters the fish's mouth through the gills. Once inside, it attaches itself to the tongue using its pincers and six hooks, which attach to different parts of the tongue and keep it in place while penetration occurs. The Samotha exuaya feeds on blood and will stay attached indefinitely. Eventually, it releases an enzyme that dissolves the tongue muscles and consumes them. All that remains is a small stump on the fish which cannot be used for feeding. The creature then attaches itself to the nearest available surface of flesh, usually an area close to where it initially attached itself, and feeds on this instead of blood until it grows to about the size of a pea, then detaches and swims out through the gills. Mice Attracting Parasite Toxoplasma gondii is the name of the parasite. It's a feline-related parasite in that, in that it can only reproduce inside a cat. As such, it's usually found in cat feces. So where do the cats get the parasite from? Well, T. gondii is usually found in mice, and it causes them to be attracted to cats. It emits a smell that causes fear in the rodents. In short, it lures the mice into their death. The cat will of course feed on the infected mice, thereby becoming the new host. 
What's even more scary is that humans can contract the parasite with the result being brain damage to the fetus. This is why it's important for pregnant women to stay away from cat litter. Vandella Charosa Also known as Kandaroo, Vandella Charosa is a type of catfish found in the Amazon, so you already know it's not a very good creature. You can think of it as the kind of catfish you won't eat, but one that will eat you. Kandaroo follows the smell of ammonia, not only to bigger fish, but also to humans. In fish, it enters through the gills and hooks itself there using its sharp spine. It then proceeds to feed on the blood of its host. In humans, well, you're gonna cringe when you hear this. It enters through the penis. Yes, yeah, you heard that right. It then goes on with its mission, which in case you haven't forgotten, is feeding on blood. The only way to get it out is through a painful surgery. There's no easy way around it. Gender Changing Barnacle You haven't seen all the creepiest parasites until you met a Zuclina. Zuclina is a barnacle that's best known for castrating crabs and making them pregnant. The female Zuclina makes its way through a female crab and makes its egg sac where the crab eggs would normally be. That sterilizes the crab, making it unable to reproduce its own offspring. The male Zuclina then go ahead and fertilize the eggs. Once the eggs are ready to hatch, the crab begins taking care of them as if they were her own. So what happens if the Zuclina enters a male crab? They will play around with its hormones until the male crab becomes more feminine. Yes, the male crab turns into a literal female. Imagine if you had that same effect on humans. Scary, right? A wasp that turns spiders into slaves. Polysphincta gutfruindi is a type of wasp that has mastered how to turn spiders into slaves. The female wasp begins by looking for a spider web. Once it locates one, it lays eggs on the abdomen. When they eventually hatch into larvae, it proceeds to drink the vital fluids of the spiders to its death. As stealing its home and fluids is not enough, the larva also secretes a chemical into the spider, causing a complete change in its behavior. The spider neglects its web and instead constructs a chemically enhanced web with a different pattern specifically designed for the growing larva. The larva then takes over the web and builds a cocoon where it peacefully grows into a wasp, safe from the predators. And the spider? Well, it already dried up into a shell. All right, comment below which of these monstrosities scared you the most. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to Forever Green, and hit the bell icon for more animal madness. We'll see you in the next one soon.